my blue archive gang. First of all, I'm sorry for kind of like neglecting you guys. Please accept my apologies. However, I have been working on a rather big video. That is this video today. This is essentially your meta pool priority ranking up until first anniversary plan your gems part two that you guys kind of asked for. And so my guys, what that means is that we are going to be looking at Stocky's updated banner guide. But not only that, I've actually put together a priority list in terms of who you should pull for. And well, in this video, I am going to tell you the reasons as to why. Because as we all know, all of these tier lists and banner guides and whatever without any justification, they're just for and trash. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. This is a blue archive video. And today we will be running through this tier list over here that pull priority for the rest of up until JP nowadays. And so hopefully this should help guide you guys as to, or who should I pull for depending on what kind of content I wanna focus on. And so before we get into this tier list itself, I'm gonna come over here and talk about arena, joint firepower and raid because essentially the way that this tier list was built was their importance in each of these three game modes. You guys already know what arena is. It is essentially your tactical challenge. It is your PVP. It is uh, a mode that is just RNG. Essentially, you send in a team, you pray to win. And then on the other hand, we have raids. However, I have also taken into consideration insane raids, which will be releasing in probably about like four to six months time. These are essentially your extreme raids. However, they're cranked up a little bit more. So it's a little bit harder. That's it. And then last of all, we have joint firepower exercise, which is essentially your time attack mode. So if I hop over to trusty YouTube and then shout out to Adipose9 for this one, big fan of your content. And essentially what he does is he runs through joint exercise season three. I'm just going to show you guys quickly. Essentially, they're on a race track and they are going to be killing mobs. It, it, it's kind of it. And then you have three teams and then at the end of it, you will sum up the score. So if I come over here, bada bing, bada boom, we have one score here and then we are going to get the addition one, two, three scores, an aggregate of 242K. Very well done, my friend. And so that is joint exercise in a nutshell. So again, we are gonna be considering these three game modes, arena, joint exercise, as well as raids, insane, in building this tier list here. But to be honest, my guys, before we get into it, like Blue Archive is just so freaking casual. It's so freaking chill. Do not let this meta list dictate who you wanna roll for. Like for me, I don't know how these girls are doing, but I'm rolling for that summer Wakamore absolutely, 100%. And if I could do it all again, I would roll for the bunny car no matter how crap she was. I don't even know if she's crap. I'm pretty sure she's not, but even if she was crap, I would still roll for her. And so starting off with the current banner, Akko, who is this one right here, Spark at all costs. You can already tell she is the S tier and for the reasons why, she essentially is the beginning of the hyper carry meta where you juice up one big carry, in this case right now, Bina for Maki. You give your hyper carry all of the juice. In this case, Akko is gonna be giving almost 40% crit rate and 73% crit damage. And then on top of that, she's also giving CD to everybody. From a meta point of view, she is meta defining. She essentially defined the hyper carry meta. And so if you are indeed meta slaving, then it is most certainly a spark at all cost. However, on top of this cracked out offensive capability, she is also going to be healing one ally and she is also going to have increased in healing. And so that is why a lot of people do actually recommend her to go to UE40 so she can actually just like giga heal something such as like Hiero's poles or etc, etc. I think that's enough about Akko. Everybody raves on about Akko. So let's move on to the next banner, which is going to be Onsen Cherino. And my guys, I know I've covered up until Wakomo, who is like down there. So I'm going to speed run through these ones really quick. But essentially, Onsen Cherino is not really a juicer. She is going to be rated at E tier simply because there are a lot of other units that can do what she does, but better. And like, if I think of any game mode where you need her, there is none. So yes, while Cherino is super, super cute, unfortunately, she's not super, super meta. Moving on, we have Onsen Chinatsu. And so on paper, Onsen Chinatsu is actually really, really freaking good because as you can see from here, her EX skill gives up to 60% attack speed to one ally. And then her normal skill is a second attack speed juicer where it goes up to 35% for 20 seconds. This means that potentially, potentially, you could also hyper carry with Chinatsu Onsen. However, the fact of the matter is, is that she is a blue damage type and she is also a striker. And outside of, I believe, Shiro Kuro, she unfortunately historically just hasn't been used too much. And so she is also a permanent character, not a limited character. That will probably sway a lot of you. And it's for these reasons that I am gonna rate her at a C. Next up, we have Onsen Noriko over here. Godly healer with attack sub. Essentially, she is going to be a fantastic healer. And the reason that she is so fantastic is because if you look at her skills for her EX skill, 
every three seconds, she is going to throw a random snack, which does AOE healing. And the crazy thing about this is that she is going to be throwing this every three seconds for 32 seconds to the lowest HP ally. What that means is that if an ally drops like below a certain HP, over 30 seconds, she is going to be able to top everybody up. And so if you guys think about like Hana's heal over time on one ally, imagine that except it bounces. It bounces between your allies. Whoever has lowest HP, it'll heal over time them. It'll be like, oh, this guy's dropped to 50%. Let's go heal him. That's freaking sick, dude. And combining that EX skill with this sub skill, which is just an increase to attack, she is a fantastic healer. And so it's for these reasons that she is not only like creating a toxic tank meta in PvP, but she is also actually used in some of the insane raids further down the line. With all of that, she is going to be rated at an A for me. I do think that she deserves this spot. Coming after Onsen Noraka, we do have two new limited units, New Year's Aru and New Year's Mutsuki. So New Year's Aru is quite an interesting character where she is able to bounce between a whole bunch of enemies up to 11 times. So think about like a ricochet, you go like pew, 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 pew. You do that up to 11 times and she is a yellow unit. Now, if you think about where that is applicable, it's gonna be Chisette because there are a lot of bunch of units everywhere and then you bounce between them and then hopefully you'll be getting a whole bunch of different resets. However, unfortunately, we already have so many different ways with dealing with Chesed and so it's for that reason that New Year's Aru is going to be rated at a B. She's good, but she's not like really, really necessary. I would say almost even a C, but for now, a B. And so alongside New Year's Aru, we have New Year's Mutsuki over here and what she does is essentially the same thing as her base variant where she throws a whole bunch of shit at the enemy and it does a ton of damage. If you don't reposition her right, then it's going to do no damage. So only pick her up if you're willing to learn how she works. She is, in fact, an amazing DPS, very much core for Peroro, and she does see a lot of use in the new game mode, the joint exercise. And so seeing as she is one of the best blue DPSs, I have opted to put her at A, and I think she does deserve it. However, if you aren't willing to put into work to like reposition her or get her into the right position, then I would say she drops potentially to like a C. So just make sure you know what you're doing if you do end up pulling for her. And so that is going to lead us to Wakamo, aka the one year anniversary, aka the banner with the two times rates, aka Man, look at those freaking thighs, boy. Wakama, to be honest, is a fantastic character. She's not like giga giga cracked, but I would say that she is pretty giga cracked. And the reason that she is so cracked is essentially she builds up a bomb with the rest of her teammates. She kind of like launches a mark and then like everybody does damage to it. And then at the end of it, it blows up. And so with that in mind, she is actually really, really core to both of the blue raids. Like, I mean, she is kind of replaceable, but remember that this is pretty much the only banner to exist so far with double three star rate ups, I would highly recommend rolling on this anyway, even if you don't like Wakamo. And so along with Wakamo came the HOD raid. And with Chihiro over here, you can tell that she is the core of it because Stocky says so. And so then you guys might ask, why exactly is Chihiro core for HOD? Well, first of all, HOD, the main mechanic that you need to abuse to beat that guy up is the 7.5 second CD on the EX skill. For a three cost EX skill, 7.5 seconds of stun, if the defense type is heavy armor, which HOD is, she was literally built to like really crush that boss. And so if you do want to be at all competitive in the HOD raid, then you do need to pick up Chihiro. And it's for that reason that Chihiro is going to be sitting right next to Wakamo, who is also an A. I forgot to forgot to mention that one just then. And so alongside Chihiro, we have Senna coming up here. So I'm gonna hop over to Senna. You can see that she enters the battlefield riding emergency vehicle number 11. She essentially comes in via an ambulance. And when she does, she is giving everybody healing, but not only that, she is also buffing all of their allies with an AOE attack buff. On top of that, she is also giving attack to one ally. And then on top on top of that, she's also giving everyone attack again via her sub skill. Now on paper, she is a fantastic unit. However, the first floor is this emergency vehicle. It is essentially a summon. And this summon also has a little bit of RNG where it might like it might screw up a little bit. It might not buff the allies attacks. It might not heal them a bit. And the other unfortunate thing is that she is also a special unit. So that means that she's competing with the likes of Akko. And it's for these reasons that I would rate her at a B. I think she is good, but like, 
she is not like really high priority in terms of pull. Moving on, we have Haruna and we have Koharu over here. Haruna, it's a no. It's 100% a no because she is already farmable. As for Koharu, however, Koharu is actually really, really freaking important, especially as we go into Insane as well as the Joint Firepower exercise. I'm not going to go through what she does. Most of you should already know, but essentially she does like healing and AoE healing. As we get into harder and harder content, like she becomes more and more important. Shuffling along to the right, we have Mimori next over here. So Mimori is... is quite an interesting character where she is able to reposition all five of your allies for a low, low cost of three. That's pretty insane considering we've had to use like Fuka if we wanted to do something like that. But on top of that, she also increases their attack speed. However, the rest of her skills are not like giga competitive. Like they're all right. She definitely sees some use, especially as a tank because she has some pretty good defensive stats. But in terms of the places that she is used, so she is a blue unit, uh, Shirokuro as well as Kaiten. I know it sounds kind of weird, but Kaiten as well. It's already saturated. You don't really need her. And so it's for those reasons that I would rate Mimoru at a C. Unfortunately, not a very high priority. Like, if you get her, you can certainly use her. Alongside Mimoru, we have the Izuna banner, the Izuna rerun. Izuna, you guys already know, she is a very, very strong blue attacker. I would say high B, almost A. I actually originally had her at A. However, at this point, you probably have a lot of blue attackers if you don't have Izuna yet. I would say she's kind of skippable, but if you don't have that many blue attackers, go for her. So next we have Hinata over here and the TLDR for her is that she is a blue attacker and she does a big AOD damage and blue attacker plus AOE damage usually means she's going to do well in Peroro which is actually true. However, again, we do have a lot of good blue units. You've got the Arisu, you've got the S. Azusa, you've got the Chisei, you've got the B. Karin, etc, etc. And it's for these reasons that I would say that she is not on my list. There, I would say that she is a C. Don't get me wrong. Again, she is fantastic for Peroro, but in terms of pull priority, if you go out of your way to get her, not quite. Now, alongside the Hinata, we have the Ui banner. And Ui is probably like the next character after Akko that is kind of like you. You probably should actually spark her. And the reason is because she is essentially going to be juicing up your main carry again by reducing the EX cost of one other ally by 50%. Imagine if that was your Maki or imagine if that was like literally any of your hyper carries. Now, on top of that, she is also going to be increasing their attack and then every 40 seconds, increasing crit rates of allies in a circular area and then increasing her own crit rate, which is kind of mid. And then she's also increasing everyone's attack speed. I don't know, man. That seems kind of giga crack to me. And therefore, for all of these reasons, I would say that she is actually comparable to Akko in terms of pool priority, that is. So after Ui, we have Maruna over here. And she's an interesting one where she doesn't see too much use in the raids. She might see some use in Chesed. However, she is more of a PvP oriented unit. And the reason for that is because she has a 22.8 second immortal status when she drops below 20% HP. In terms of her tanking capability, because that is exactly what she is, she is a tank, she's an evasion tank where she increases her evasion by x amount and she also gets more evasion when her ex skill is active now speaking of the ex skill i forgot to mention that this arch shape area is really really freaking big she knocks them all back and then she freaking cleaves the back line as well and so only because i feel like there are so many other pool priorities that is why she gets a b however i can definitely see a lot of pvp players that would want to pull for her like almost 100 percent as for cherino the majority of you should know who she is and what she does she essentially increases your critical damage if i'm not wrong and then also increases your recovery rate that is freaking cracked out and so therefore she sees use in all of the raids she sees a little bit of use in arena not too much but she also sees use in joint firepower exercise. I would say that she is actually quite deserving of an A at least. Like I bring her to my chesed, I bring her, I bring her to a lot of places, to the story mode, etc, etc. And so with that being said, let's move on and we've got Iori. Uh, that is going to be a skip because if you guys don't have Iori, that's freaking weird. For starters, she's farmable, but second of all, she's essentially the best unit in the game. If you didn't reroll for her, then I don't know. It's kind of weird, bro. And then as for the twins, I would say that the twins are still quite relevant, but at this point in the game, I wouldn't roll for them simply because you probably have a pretty well built out yellow team and so therefore you can actually prioritize some other units such as these ones over here. Now the top one over here is Miyako and Miyako TLDR is that she is a tank that stuns. That's pretty much her identity and so when you hear the word stun you immediately think of HOD. 
that is that is pretty much her role and so therefore i would say she's not overly required like you can see she's at a b if you're gonna pop up the chihiro then you can probably run without her on the other hand down here we have saki and saki is essentially another core hod unit where she does an aoe stun but also provides attack and so therefore she is quite good for hod and i would say that she is almost Mm, Chihiro versus Saki, I would probably pick up Chihiro over her. But if you didn't manage to pick up Chihiro, then Saki is also a good pickup. As for Miyu up over here, unfortunately, I haven't seen her in action well, like, anywhere because her kit is kind of weird right where it really enables auto attackers and kind of only auto attackers however i must admit like after hearing from a lot of the other guys um miyu is just unfortunately going to be down in the d tier and in this situation i think it's more of a miyu doesn't really have her content yet which can be said for a couple of other characters. So alongside Miyu, we have the rerun of Tsurugi. Tsurugi, unfortunately, outside of this BIS just said Indoor Insane, I would say like, you know, she's decent, she's okay. However, I do think that there are a lot of other units that you could substitute this unit for. And so I'm gonna have to say she is a skip a D tier. I mean, for God's sake, like chances are you probably already have her by now. And so that's going to lead us into the summer rerun. Uh, get S Azusa if you haven't already, I would be inclined to agree. You can see that I have placed her at an A tier and that is because again, she is the only unit in the game to have a defense down on her sub skill. But to be honest, on top of that, she is also just such a strong blue attacker. You're pretty much going to be taking her everywhere you go. There is blue and potentially some yellow as well. Next, we've got Kaya there over here and Stocky says no, I'm inclined to agree because all she really offers is a shield and generally speaking, shielding isn't gonna exactly get you like the top ranks, right? And to be honest, if you really need a shield or some form of damage mitigation, I believe that there are a whole bunch of other options. It's for that reason that I would rate her at an E. However, alongside Kayade, we have the Iroha and Iroha's Tiger Tank is essentially one of the best summons in the game, especially in PvP and Peroro because it can ricochet between multiple multiple enemies and generally speaking we want to hit like three or four enemies but she is like really really strong in terms of a dps on top of that she's also got an attack sub and as you can see from stocky's comments core peroro zilla insane pvp meta changer i think that she is actually spark worthy just seeing some of the footage some of the gameplay and so if it's for that reason i give her an s after iroha we have tsukuyo over here and she's an interesting one because she is a tank who can actually apply defense down however generally speaking her only role is in the BIS for Kaiten Insane Part 1, which is a pretty good role. You know, it's a great role. But to roll for that, I would say that's probably not a great idea. So it's for that reason, I would put her at a C. Maybe a B, but like probably a C. And then we've got a Yuzu rerun. Now, this is pretty interesting because not only is she BIS Urban Bina Insane, she is also quite good at HOD. You guys should already know what Yuzu does, but like, I feel like that investment is a little bit steep. Needs UE50. I don't know, man. I ain't no whale. And with that, that is going to lead us to these three really cracked units known as the Arius squad, this one over here. Starting off with Hiori, she is very, very dependent on the rest of the squad. So if I show you the skill, the EX skill over here, the TLDR is that if there are two or fewer Arius squad students in the same team, then she does a defense down for 23 to 31%. However, if you have all three of the Arius squad members, uh, this one, this one, and this one, then it's going to actually go up to 51.6% instead. On top of that, she also has a defense down on her normal skill, and she's also gaining crit damage, and she is also going to be giving everyone attack. I mean, that is a very, very good unit, even like as a standalone. However, for maximum value, you're going to want to run her with the rest of the Arius unit. Next, let's move on to Misaki down here. And so what she is, is she's pretty pretty much like a cracked out Chise. And the reason I say that is because her weapon type is a freaking rocket launcher. And so what that means is that her base attack is giga giga high, 5.4k. And combining that, with this EX skill, which is leaving seven circular areas that's gonna persist for 48 seconds, that means 12 ticks, that is gonna be a ton of damage. And as for the rest of her kit, you can already see a 37.1% attack, another 26.6% attack, and then also dealing extra damage depending on the numbering of weakering effects. 
So what this is essentially saying is that if you can stack five debuffs down because it has a five stack limit, you could get up to extra 50% damage coming from Misaki. And so to complete the Arius squad, we have Atsuko over here. And she is essentially one of the best evasion tanks I have ever seen. Now, her EX skill recovers the HP of all allies in a circular area around her every five seconds. Heal over time. That's going to be about 300% healing over the duration of 30 seconds. And then this is my favorite part. It's these ones over here where she can every 30 seconds deploy a smoke screen that increases evasion of allies. That's actually really freaking cool because she is essentially buffing up the durability of her own teammates. She is making all of them a lot more tankier. And as for the passive and the sub skill, she is just getting more and more evasion. I really do think that Atsuko is one of the greatest tanks in the game. Hopefully when we get her, uh, we can actually see it. However, after looking at each of these characters individually, we kind of have to evaluate them like individually versus together, right? Because we have this snippet of text from Stocky. The TLDR is that if you can get all three, then get them because it's going to get you like some pretty cracked out points. However, if you cannot, then that's kind of okay as well because you can just get one Arius member and then borrow another one that isn't Hiori. In terms of the priority within the Arius squad, because like, you know, we can't always get all three of them. We got Atsuko and then Misaki and then Hiori. I completely agree with this assessment because Atsuko, she offers that evasion tank, that AOE evade for the team. I don't think we've seen anything like it. And so I do think that she has the highest value out of all of them. However, everything that I just said is very much for Hiori or insane. So if you guys are honestly just looking for the EX clears, you can probably ignore a lot of this one here. And so together for the Arya squad, I would rate them all at A. So one, two, three. If I was to rank them within each other, I'd probably take Atsuko first and then Misaki and then Hiyori. It's just simply because like I'm really in love with this evasion tank concept and the way that they've done it with her. All right. And so with that, that is going to bring me to this final tier list. I, I clearly don't have the jammies to roll for all of these, so I'll tell you who I am going to roll for. Personally, my must-haves are Akko, Ui, Iroha, and then I've already got S Azusa. I'm 100% going for Wakamo. I'm 100% going for Atsuko. I already have Koharu. I think I'm going to have to pick between one of these two. I'm leaning more towards Onoraka. And then on top of that, I am 100% going for Chihiro over here, just because I really want to make my HOD raids very comfy. As for the rest of them, if I have enough currency, I will roll for the Misaki. I will roll for the Hiyori, the Saki, etc, etc. However, we all know that it, these jemmies are not unlimited, you know? So we've got to pick and choose. On the other hand, we've recently got word from JP that they've actually released more summer units. So you can see over here, Sama Wakamo, Sama Nonami. I am 100% rolling for these two. And if it means sacrificing some of these A tier units, man, freaking so be it, you know? However, my guys, with that, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. That was probably a very, very long one. I've spent like countless hours preparing for this. And so hopefully you guys get the utility, get the value out of this. Let me know if you want a part three. I don't even know what I would say if there was a part three, but let me know. <laughs> and with that, you guys already know what time it is. It is time for the secret question. Who of all of these characters from now until JP are you going to roll for? For me, in terms of biases, I really like Wakamo, I really like Atsuko, and I really like Saki. Although Saki kind of needs to get binned because she ain't meta, unfortunately. And I'm kind of meta slaving out here. However, the secret question is about you, not me. And so let me know, my guys, down in the comments below who you are going to be pulling out of all of these units. If you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, and turning on that notification bell. However, as, uh, as Atsuko once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.